Hey guys, Harman, back for another review. So today we're going to take a look at the Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Batman and Leonardo 2-pack. Um, you can see only at GameStop, Batman vs. TMNT, Batman Leonardo 2-packs uh, written there. So it's 22 pieces, which should be all the individual pieces that are in the set. Um, you can see it says DC Collectibles on this logo right here. Alright, and then you also get different uh, pictures of the other two packs that are coming. Um, now, we'll be reviewing the Robin and Raph also. I have that one in hand. Um, but the next ones coming out are going to be October for Backer on Donnie, uh, November for Alfred Michelangelo, and then finally December for uh, Raish and Shredder. So I don't know if there's anything else coming after that. I hope there is, um, but that's all that's announced so far. Um, now they also did make a um, uh, Mikey as Batman, which was a Comic Con exclusive. But you can find this at some specialty shops and comic shops as well. All right, and over to the side, you just get a uh, couple credits on here. At the top, you do get a Nickelodeon logo. At the bottom, you get DC Collectibles. And then it does say Batman sculpted by Paul Harding and Leonardo sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these out of the box and get a closer look. Alright, so here they are outside of the packaging. And these guys are looking really, really cool. Um, definitely reminds me of how they look in the animated movie. And I think if you're a fan of this line, you're really going to dig these. Um, so before we get too far into it, uh, I think I'm going to start off by taking a look at Batman and then we'll take a look at Leonardo. Alright so taking a look at the head sculpt for Batman this looks fantastic. Um, I really like pretty much everything about this cow. Um, I love the like the big white eyes that's really reminiscent of how he looks in the comics and the, uh, the old animated series cartoons um, and you could really see like the brow he has some nice detail like lines kind of um, like the face lines coming through the mask, so I do like that. Um, I love the way his mouth and like the lines and the chin is a dark line. If there's one thing I have to complain about the DC Collectibles animated Batman is they don't do those details. They sculpt them, but they don't actually paint them, which is a huge letdown. You just can't see in his mouth. Um, so this, I'm really happy that they paid more attention uh, to that mouth. And it just looks fantastic. I love the uh, cleft chin or butt chin that he's got going on. And you can see it's kind of flatter in the front. So it really gives it that classic Batman, uh, you know, chin. Now, if there's one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the gap in that cow. I think they could have done just a little bit better job hiding that. Um, and the one thing about Batman is the cow isn't really a separate piece from the cape, or at least it's not usually. Um, so when you break it up and you got the fabric and the sculpt, it really kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. So you could try to push it up. And even from the side, you could really see how it stands out. And I mean, if you could, if you could push it up into there a little bit or tilt his head up, it definitely hides it better. Um, but there is a difference in color between the cape and the mask. So it's not as good of a transition as well. Um, but I mean, overall, I think they've done a really good job. Now, just taking a look at the torso of Batman here, you could tell he's definitely a little bit more built up in this animated movie than he was in the animated series. And if you look at the biceps and the shoulders and the chest, you could really see that he's a little bit bigger than those usual animated series are. And I really like that. It definitely looks a bit more like that comic Batman. And uh, I think the animated movie to figure is really translated well here. The logo for the bat uh, symbol is done really well. It's very clean. It's not sculpted. It is painted, though. Uh, at least I believe it is. If it's printed, it's done really well. Uh, it's very clean. There's no real flubs or paint screw-ups, which I'm happy about. And the position looks pretty good. You do get some black line work on the ribs and the uh, bicep area. Um, the actual gauntlets are done really well. They got like a little bit more of a stylized look to them, of course. And now they are going to be a sharper uh, plastic, a harder plastic. So beware of that. 
um, and I do like the hands. They're a little bit more, uh, a little bit larger than usual, so you could definitely uh, punch somebody pretty good. The there's like a little line right through the abs. Looks like either a seam uh, for the suit, I believe. Um, and then you can see the shorts. There's a little bit of wrinkles in there, which is done nice. And if you done if you move the uh, the cape, you can see again that line work detail. Utility belt goes all the way around, and I believe they sculpted these lines a little bit. Um, if they didn't, again, they're done very well, uh, really consistent all the way through. So really a nice job on that upper torso and lower torso of Batman. And the legs look really good as well. Again, you get some of that black line work uh, on those legs. You can kind of see it on both of them. Uh, you do get really nice... Um, like the calves look really cool, really muscle bound, just like the upper torso is. Um, the actual boot lines right here are sculpted, they're not just painted. So I really like that and kind of see it from the side there. Uh, the boots look nice. You don't get peg holes on the bottom of the feet. That's always irritating with these DC collectibles. Um, but yeah, overall, really nice details uh, all around on the legs and of course the rest of the body. Now the biggest part of this Batman figure is the cape, and they've done an excellent job with this cape. Now ever since I've had this Mikey as Batman, uh, and this was that Comic-Con exclusive, I've really had high hopes for Batman to have just as good a cape. And he really has pretty much the same cape, which I'm very, very happy about. You can see it does drape really nicely over his shoulders. Now I can't get it quite to cover up his body like I can with Mikey and I think it's just because maybe they did use that same cape and since Mikey's smaller it, it just doesn't cover as much of Batman um, but overall it really looks nice I mean you could drape it behind him uh, you can kind of pull it down in the front a little bit uh, you can do the whole side cape deal um, if you want you could spread it out there is no wires in it or anything like that but overall, I'm really, really happy with that. All right, so switching gears for a minute, let's go ahead and take a look at Leonardo. And starting with the head sculpt, I definitely like the work on this head sculpt. Um, now, I've got a couple little complaints about him. Um, first one is that little dot in the forehead is definitely some kind of paint error, so that kind of sucks. And he also has a little bit of an issue on his cheek. I'm not sure if that's going to reflect all the sculpts, but I've definitely got some issue going on. And one other thing I definitely don't like about this is the back of the bandana. They kind of sculpted the two pieces together, which is weird. And then you really can't pose this. You really, it just kind of sits, sits there and it doesn't hang on the shoulder. I cannot get it to stay. It just kind of lifts off of it. And because of that, it projects this ridiculous shadow going across his chest. Aside from those gripes, this is a really good looking head sculpt. I really like the white eyes. I like the little like eyebrow marks kind of coming through uh, the bandana. And I really like these little line marks on uh, like right underneath his eye. Alright, just taking a look at the torso for Leonardo. Um, he's got the same like black lines you see from uh, like Batman, how he has the lines in his uh, chest. You can see the lines in the shell. I really like how they've done that. They've definitely sculpted the front of the shell, which is nice. He's got that belt going across, and you do get kind of like an L, the way they've done that little blue piece right there. And all the turtles actually have like their first letter of their name on their belts. It's just done a little bit more subtle than what you see in like the old cartoons. Uh, again, he's got that nice bicep um, and muscular detail. You got some of the black lines going through there. And he does have uh, nice, like, big hands, just like the Batman did. Um, over to the back, you got the shell, which is really nice details. Uh, you got the belt going across here. And, I don't know, it, it's a little squished on here, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that or not. It got a little bit of blemish on here, so it's not perfect. Um, but the shell looks really nice. I like the uh, elbow pads, very reminiscent of the CGI cartoon and even the original Mirage comics. So, uh, really nice design. And down to the legs, again, you get those nice 
uh, line details going through here. You do have the two-toed uh, turtle design, which is really nice. One thing I always love about the two-toed design is they stand excellent. They really don't need any stands or anything ever. Um, but I like the toes on there. You can see some of the nails uh, for the toes. No peg holes on the feet, of course, but you really don't need them uh, with the turtle. And then on the back, you really don't have much line work there, but you can see he's got uh, some muscle tone in there. And of course, you do have uh, the knee pads, which are done in the same style as the elbow pads. So, really good details overall. And just taking a look at the accessories, go ahead and start with Batman. Um, he does get the grapple gun, of course, and you get two different hooks to put in here. Uh, one is a little bit more spread out, and the other one's a little bit more compressed. And what you do is you go ahead and just take this, and you can just remove that, and then you can just put the other one in this little hole here. And once you put that in the hole, uh, you have a smaller grapple hook, so pretty cool weapon. And then the next two accessories you get is the Batarang, which is always a must, and you can see that's a really big Batarang, so pretty good accessory. Usually these things are way too small. Um, and then you also get this little Batman symbol thing, and I think that is what he throws on, I think he throws it on Mikey's back, and it like has a hook that basically shoots, shoots out of it and flings Mikey like into the wall. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, but yeah, both of them are really nicely detailed, and uh, the plastic is a little bit harder. Again, it's not that like softer, rubbery plastic or anything. And then the final accessory for Batman is the slice of pizza, and that's something that all of the sets come with, except for most likely uh, Raish and Shredder. Now, just like all DC collectibles figures, you do get a ridiculous amount of hands with this figure. Um, so you do get the two closed-fisted hands on the body, and then you get three sets of additional hands. So you get a total of four sets of hands. Uh, you do have the more open-gripping hands, the slightly more closed-gripping hands, and then the even more closed-gripping hands. So they're all gripping in some way, and they're basically going to be uh, to hold the different weapons. And I think you might be able to hold the size um, with these hands as well. Now, interchanging the hands is not the easiest thing to do, and I think it's because of the way this hinge works. Uh, so, pull this off, and then you have that ball joint in there. And then what you could do is you could just put, let's say, that more open gripping hand in here. And you really want to try to do this slow, because if you do it too fast, the peg will rotate on you. It's really hard to get this in. It just happened there. I'm trying to do it on camera. All right, there we go. So then there you have the gripping hand. Here he is holding the grapple gun, and the way it works, you really don't get like a handle for it like you typically do, so you can kind of put this in almost any of the hands. Um, but here he is with the not quite so open hand. Here he is with that small bat hook thing. <laughs> Here he is holding the slice of pizza. Here he is holding the batarang in his left hand. Here he is holding the batarang in the hand with the space between the fingers, and I think that's pretty cool. And for an extra bonus with Batman, you do get the two hands with the spaces in between them, so if you have Raphael, you can put those size in both of his hands, holding it just like the way Raphael holds his size. And that's a nice bonus, because he actually does fight the turtles with Raph's size. Alright, and just like Batman, you do get accessories with Leonardo. Um, you don't get quite as many accessories, but they're definitely a lot larger than the ones you get with Batman. Um, so just taking a look at his main weapon here, which is his uh, biggest accessory. You do get two swords, and it's nice you can see a fuller kind of going through each of the blades. And then you've got a little bit of color going on there. Of course, they make sure to put that blue in there. Um, so really nice detail in the swords. And then you can actually sheathe the swords, which is nice. So if you want to uh, conceal the weapons, you could do that. And of course, they will slide out uh, fairly well. So if you want to um, you know, have them half in the sheaths, you could do that. 
And the sheath itself will actually attach to the belt. And you can see how there's like a little hole here on Leonardo. And you have this little peg. So what you're gonna do is just go ahead and peg uh, that in. And this is definitely unique because um, most um, Leonardo designs, he always has the sheath on his back. So this is a little bit different uh, design for this animated movie. And you also get a couple different sets of hands for Leonardo. Uh, the first set you get is the gripping hands, and these look pretty good. Do look like a really tight grip, uh, and I like the way they've done the nails on there. You also get a set of these like chopping type of hands, so uh, or like karate chop. So they're just opened hands, and uh, the detail looks pretty good on those as well. All right, and then to interchange the hands on Leo, you just want to pop this off. And it's a little tight, just like Batman, but it does seem a little bit easier uh, than the Batman was. Uh, and again, you got that big round peg in there. And then you just want to pop on this hand. And just like the Batman, it's really tight uh, to get on there. But once you get it on there, you do have a much different uh, hand sculpt. For the final accessory with Leo, you also get the slice of pizza. And if you want, he could just hold that in those gripping hands. You see it with the left gripping hand. And it's the same pizza as the one that came with the uh, Batman, so there's really no real difference. Alright, and here he is holding both of the swords. And of course you have the sheath still on the side. Now if you want, you can just peg that off if you don't like the way it looks or whatever. Um, but it doesn't peg into the back, so it only can be stored on his side. Um, but he looks really good with the swords. I will say it's a little tough getting those swords into the hands. What I would recommend is taking the hands off the body and actually starting the sword here, getting the handle in first, and then slowly working it into the hand. So the gripping hands are pretty tight, but overall he looks really cool. Alright, so looking over the articulation for Batman, you actually do get some really good articulation here. Uh, so looking at the head, you can go left and right all the way around if you want. Um, he doesn't have a great range of movement looking up, which is a bit of a downside. You can look up a little bit. You really can't look down much either. Um, you do get some pivot left to right, so you do get some good movement there. Um, the arms go out about that far. You do get um, a single jointed elbow it looks like, but he can go pretty high up, like 90, just about 90. A um, little bit of a swivel at the elbow, but nothing at the actual bicep. Wrist can swivel. Um, you really can't get much motion up and down unless you twist that peg you might get it. Uh, it's a really weird peg system for that hand. I'm not huge on that. Um, you can move here at the diaphragm or the upper torso and he moves pretty good. Um, can't really go like you can't tilt him left or right really. Um, you can't really look well actually you can go pretty far down. You can go pretty far up or back. And then as far as the legs get a pretty good split and then good high kick go forward about that far you do get the double jointed knee which is a little tight uh, the foot can go up and down pretty good and you do have a little bit of a rock not much though so overall pretty good um, articulation with Batman here so looking at the articulation for Leonardo, uh, he can turn his head pretty much all the way around. Um, you really don't get any movement with this bandana, which I've kind of touched on already. Um, he doesn't really look up at all. Uh, he can look down pretty good, but I wish he could look up because the human characters are a lot taller. Um, the arms can go out pretty far, down pretty far, um, up. So pretty good there. Single joint at the elbow, so it gets a decent range. Um, the wrist can swivel 
pretty good. Just like, um, well, actually, different from Batman, he can actually move his uh, wrist a little bit better, so he can go up and down with them, and he can swivel with no issues. Um, nothing really at the torso because it is a shell, um, but there is some cut here, so I can't really figure out exactly what that's for, if it's just the construction of it, but there is some kind of joint right there, so I can't really get it to go anywhere, um, but there is something. Um, the legs can go out real far, so you could do a big high kick or a split. Um, go decently forward and back. He does have the double joint on the uh, knee, which is nice. Uh, the feet can go flat or down. They really can't tilt up. And then you do have some really nice uh, pivot, uh, ankle pivot for, for his feet there. So overall, I think the articulation might be slightly better on Leonardo. So for the first comparison, here's all the figures that have been released so far in this Batman vs. TMNT movie line. You have Raphael, Robin, Batman, Leonardo, and Mikey as Batman. And overall, I do think the heights look pretty good, and it seems like they're consistent with how they looked in the movie. For the next comparison, here is some of the Batman vs. TMNT figures mixed in with the Batman the Animated Series figures. And I think these fit good for the most part. The New Adventures stuff might fit just a little bit better in that style. You can see Harley is really, really small. For your Batman comparison, here he is next to the Animated Series Batman, also made by DC Collectibles. And then the NECA Toys San Diego Comic Con DC vs. Dark Horse Armored Batman. And you can see all these kind of follow that blue, gray uh, vibe. And uh, they all look pretty good next to each other. And like I was saying with this Batman, I love how they added the line work to the face. If you look at the old animated series Batman, you really have no details in that mouth. And just for a movie comparison, uh, here is the original 1989 Toy Biz movie Batman. And then of course the NECA Toys 1989 Batman, which came years later. And for your Leo comparisons, here he is next to the 1987 Wolf cartoon Leonardo and the 1990 movie Leonardo, and both are made by NECA Toys. And for one more Leo comparison, here he is next to the movie star Leonardo, made by Playmates Toys, and then the Mirage Comics black and white Leonardo, made by NECA Toys. And if you really wanted to, you could use the NECA Toys cartoon shredder as a good stand-in until that shredder comes. He does seem to have a pretty good height comparison. Batman might be just a little too tall compared to Shredder, but overall it does look pretty cool with these figures. Alright, so that's my review of the Batman vs. TMNT Batman and Leonardo set. And overall, I think this is a really great start to this line of figures. Um, I really like the designs of these. They definitely look just like they step right out of that animated movie. Um, I really love the detail in Batman's face. Like, that line work is so good. I love the little mouth they've got on here, uh, the chin, just everything. It's just nice to see those lines painted. Like I said, with that animated series line, you really don't see that detail. Um, so it's nice to see it in this figure. And Leonardo looks really good as well, but I do think Batman's the better figure in this line. I don't like this bandana on Leonardo at all. I wish that would have been either fabric or just sculpt both pieces separately. I just don't like how it kind of sits off of his shoulder. You really have to tilt his head to get that to sit right. Um, and that's going to be really annoying with taking pictures with that light going through that bandana. So that's definitely a gripe. There is a couple little blemishes like the dot. On, on Leo's forehead, there is a little thing on his cheek, and even Batman has a little bit of a blemish on his cheek. And it could be some kind of sculpt issue, or it could be a mold issue, I'm not sure. Um, but there is some little minor, like, kind of defects, uh, but nothing I can't get around. I love the paint, uh, the way it looks, the overall look of both figures and both characters. 
uh, are represented well in like a classic style. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this set. So thanks for watching my review. Please like the video if you liked it. And if you want to see more Batman vs. TMNT uh, video reviews, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll also do horror and other themed um, figure reviews. So if you want to check out some of those, uh, go ahead and check those out. Um, and just a special shout out to the people that leave encouraging and positive comments about my reviews. I really do appreciate that. Definitely makes me want to keep making more reviews. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. And until next time, guys, see ya. <laughs>